Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we're going to look at sum 13 from Array 2, and this is the Java problem. If you watch me do this in Python, um, it's an interesting one because I really like to use a for loop for this, but it won't work in Python because of the way that Python compiles the programs versus the way Java does. Um, this is nothing more than a modified sum problem. That is, we're going to find the sum, but add a little fancy if statement on the inside of that loop. Okay, let's look at this. So we're going to return the sum of the numbers in the array, return 0 for an empty array, except the number 13 is very unlucky, so it does not count, and the numbers that come immediately after 13 also do not count. You can make sense of this by looking at the examples, kind of, because they've left out a really important example. Um, here we have 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1, which gives me 6. No 13 there. 1 plus 1, which gives me 2. Again, no 13. In this case, 1, 2, 2, 1, 13 gives me 6, because I ignore that 13. The case they've ignored here is when I have a 13 inside the list with a number after it, because this question states that 13 is really unlucky, so we ignore the number that follows the 13. And I've made up this example here. We have 1, 13, 2, 2, 1, 13. And that's going to give me 4, because I'm going to ignore this 13 and this 2, because that 2 follows the 13. So I get 1 plus 2 plus 1, and of course I ignore that last 13. So like I said, this problem is really just a modified sum. So I'm going to do this a little bit just incorrectly, and then I'm going to show you how to kind of modify the sum algorithm. So we're going to say int sum equals 0, and then we're going to say for int i equals 0. i is less than nums.length, and i is equal to i plus 1. And all I'm going to say, whoop, pardon me, is sum equals sum plus nums at i, and then I will return the sum. And I hit go. Oh, let me just pause here, find what that problem is. When I added my comments here, I got rid of this bottom brace. This problem should work now. Oh, still a problem. And I just had a little problem at the bottom of my comment there. All right, so this is a sum algorithm. We just added up, and obviously this is wrong, because any time that I have a 13, it doesn't work. So what I can do now is I can, well, I can easily modify this just so I don't include the 13. So I'm going to say if nums at i is not equal to 13. And well, if it's not equal to 13, only then am I going to add them up. So we'll just do that. And I get a couple more right, because now the case where this 13 is at the end, it ignores it. But where I start to run into a problem is this situation here, where I have a 13 partway through. Because in this case, I have to ignore this 2 here. All right, so how do we do this? Well, let's trace this example and show you what I'm thinking. When i is 0, and we say 0 is less than 6, which is true, we run the loop. And we say is nums at 0 not equal to 13, and that's true, so sum is 1. Then i increments to 1, 1 is less than 6, that's true. And now we say nums at 0 is not equal to 13, which is false. Because notice, the, first, the second element is 13, and we're not going to add that. But what we can do is we can actually proactively increment our counter. So if, I, if I'm at this 13 and I say, oh, you're equal to a 13 and i is there, I'm going to increment you right away. So when the loop gets to the end of the loop and we increment again, we bypass that. And that's the trick to this problem. What we have to do here is we have to put an else statement here. And this else statement is going to simply do this. It's going to say, oh, if you're not equal to 13, add it. But otherwise, we're going to increment i by 1. Because remember, every t when, we get, when we get to the end of the loop, i, the i loop, the change is applied, which is i is equal to i plus 1. So in the case that we run into a 13, we increment i once here. And then when we get to the loop, we increment it i a second time. And that solves our problem. So this is a really nice solution. Again, it's kind of built off what I call a modified sum. If you are learning Python as well, I do encourage you to go look at my Python solution to this, because even though logically this, this approach works perfectly fine in Python, there is a problem with the way Python executes for loops that will cause this not to work. It has a bit of a logic error in it, and in my video I go over that. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day.